My name is Nick Stowe. I'm an ecologist, and this is the ecology of the Ottawa Valley. Before we can talk about the ecology of the Ottawa Valley, of course we need to talk about what the Ottawa Valley actually is. And it is this feature that you see before you. These low lands lying below this line of hills, this escarpment, which is known as the Erdley Escarpment. It's very difficult to see, but far across the valley there is another low line of hills, and all the land between is the Ottawa Valley with the Ottawa River running through it. But to understand the Ottawa Valley, we need to understand its geology. And we're going to start by looking at the rocks on which I'm sitting. The rocks on which I am sitting were formed 800 million years ago, deep beneath mountains that at the time were as tall as the Himalayas. These stones were formed probably 20 kilometers below the Earth's surface. We can see evidence of that in these large mineral crystals Large crystals are a sign that the rock mineralized, crystallized very slowly at great temperatures. And then below, underlying all of that vegetation, all of the soils immediately below the vegetation, is bedrock that is 400 million years old. A 400 million year difference between the top of this escarpment and the bottom of this escarpment. To understand why that is, we need to talk about plate tectonics. We now know that the Earth's crust and the continents float upon a semi-liquid molten mantle and they move about very, very slowly. And over the past billion years, they have come together twice to form supercontinents, and then broken apart again to form oceans and seas. 800 million years ago, one of those collisions formed the continent that we call Rodinia a supercontinent. And when Rodinia was formed, the collision of those land masses to form that supercontinent created enormous mountains, as high as the Himalayas are today. And where I'm sitting on these stones, we had one of those monstrous mountain chains. And that continent survived for a couple of hundred million years, and then began to tear apart. When continents tear apart, as I mentioned, they form oceans or shallow seas. And that's what started to happen here in the Ottawa Valley. The continent started to tear apart at this point, but then stopped. The Ottawa Valley is a failed rift valley. It's technically called a graben. Uh, the Ottawa Bonacher graben is what it's called technically. It's a place of weakness in the Earth's crust, in the continental crust, but not weak enough that it actually tore apart when, it, uh, when Rudinia broke up. Four hundred and fifty million years ago, the continents came together to form another supercontinent that we now call Pangaea. And again, huge mountain chains were formed. 
this time to the south and to the east of the Ottawa Valley. And again, several hundred million years later, when that continent broke up, there was further stress placed on this rift, this Ottawa Bonacher Graven. Again, it was not enough to, to tear the continent apart, but it was enough to pull the land apart sufficiently for a large portion of it to drop down. And the Ottawa Bonacher Graven is what we would call a drop fault. So the land between us, uh, the land that we're overlooking, between the hills in the far distance and between the early escarpment here, has dropped down many hundreds, if not thousands, of meters below the land on which I'm sitting. So what happened to those mountains? Well, erosion happened. We're talking about 800 million years of erosion. If you think about rates of erosion, to erode the, the 20 kilometers of, of stone that sat above this rock on which I'm sitting, it only requires the erosion of one millimeter, just one small millimeter of rock every 40 years to erode 20 kilometers of stone over 800 million years ago. And where did that stone go? Well, it was eroded down into the basin that you see before us, the Ottawa Bonacher Graben. All of that erosion spread out over this valley, this sedimentary basin, and formed sedimentary rocks. That happened after the breakup of Rodinia. It happened again after the breakup of Pangaea. And the bedrock of this valley is about 400 million years ago, uh, corresponding to the erosion that happened to those mountains to the south and east of us when, that were created when Pangaea was formed. They eroded in here, they laid down these enormous beds of, of limestone that go many, many uh, hundreds of meters deep. Later, this area was subject to uh, glaciation, the scraping of the vegetation and the soils, and more uh, erosion of the rock. There were there was a shallow sea here, which I will talk about in another video. There was an enormous post-glacial river that flowed through here, which again I'll talk about in another, another video. And these have created the geology that underlies this whole feature, the Ottawa Valley, and which helps, uh, which sets so much of the conditions uh, for the development and the and the growth and the evolution of life here. The early escarpment is not just known for its geological story, but also it forms a migration route for birds, particularly for raptors that migrate north and south through the Ottawa Valley. The wind that comes across the valley rises over the early escarpment, creating a thermal that birds like hawks and turkey vultures can use to glide for miles and miles and miles with virtually no expenditure of energy. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the geology of the Ottawa Valley, this view of the Erdley Escarpment. In the next video, 
I'll be talking more about the limestones of the Ottawa Valley, their formation in a shallow tropical sea. Thank you.